my name is Kara and I've been editing travel videos for me and my husband's YouTube channel since 2016. To date, I've made over 850 videos using Adobe Premiere Pro and today I'm going to show you a few things that I wish somebody would have taught me a lot sooner. These simple tips and tricks that I use in all of our videos now help make your videos better and save you time. Plus, they can be applied to any type of video that you're editing, not just travel videos. First, I want to talk about color correcting and I'm going to show you exactly what I do to color correct all of our videos. I currently have a project pulled up from a video we recently posted to YouTube where Nate and I were in the Austrian mountains and there's so much nature and beauty and color and I just really wanted to make sure the whole thing popped. But there are like a million different clips in this timeline and to individually enhance each one of them would take forever. Instead, we're gonna create an adjustment layer, which is what you see right here. Anything I apply to this adjustment layer will affect whatever is underneath it. So I'm going to start fresh over here in this uncolor corrected sequence. And I'm going to go to file new adjustment layer. This matches all of my sequence settings. And I'm going to name this one. I'm going to pull this into a timeline above everything else and drag it out. All right, so here's my adjustment layer. Now I'm going to go over here to my color tab. If I have my adjustment layer selected, anything I adjust in this color panel is going to apply to that adjustment layer and everything that's underneath it. So this is me, believe it or not, on this tiny ladder. I'm going to make sure my adjustment layer is selected and I'm just going to, for example, lift the highlights, add some contrast, Brighten these shadows up a little bit, maybe even the whites. Definitely need some saturation. And let's just see how much better that looks. So you can see over here in my source monitor, the greens and everything. It just, it looks so much better now. But the coolest thing is it's now applied that to the entire video. Everything just looks a little bit nicer. So that's one way to do it. I did this for a while, but then I discovered LUTs. A LUT is a file that saves color as a template, kind of like an Instagram filter. Go over here to where it says input LUT in the basic correction tab. You can choose any of these default ones or you can add your own LUT. I use one that I bought that's called Summer because I think it's a pretty filter. And wow, it's very cinematic and pretty, but it's a bit much for me. I usually like our videos to have a bit more of a casual natural feel. So how do we fix that? It's very easy. All you have to do is lower the opacity of the adjustment layer. So when I'm just pulling down the adjustment layer, it's just like pulling the blinds a little bit. I'm going to lower it to maybe 20. Voila! How much better does that look? So I'm going to toggle it on and off over here to show off, on. I think that looks a lot better. And once again, it's been applied to the entire video. And that's pretty much the extent of color correcting for me. All right, my next tip is using Adobe stock videos. There are a few scenarios where Nate and I have to rely on stock footage. Most often it's when we're filming in national parks. Last year, Nate and I visited Yellowstone National Park where you're not allowed to fly drones. You can't fly drones in any of the national parks in the US, which is so painful because they're so beautiful. <sighs> But thankfully, someone somewhere had permission in Yellowstone and uploaded their footage to Adobe Stock. So Nate and I are able to show aerial footage of Yellowstone in our video without breaking any rules. All I've done is pulled up my Adobe Creative Cloud. Over here underneath Resource Links, click on Stock. In the search bar, I'm going to type in Yellowstone and filter by free. And I'm going to use these filters to find exactly what I need. So I'm only looking for videos and specifically aerial videos. Woohoo! Look at all this footage! Here we have an aerial shot of a waterfall, the thermal area, another waterfall, all kinds of stuff. And literally, all you have to do to use them is click license. This one is free and it's just downloading my computer. Okay, now that it's downloaded, I'll just pull up my project, import the stock footage just like any other video, and there it is. How easy is that? Number three, motion graphic templates. I am not an animator by any means. It's just not my thing, but sometimes I need animations. And that's when I take advantage of the Essential Graphics panel. It's built right into Premiere Pro, and it's basically a bunch of templates that somebody's already animated for me 
that I can customize. Great for people like me. Feels really fancy, but it's extremely simple. I use them all the time, but there's one that I use at the beginning of every single video as kind of our intro card. So let me show you. The project I've pulled up right now is from earlier this year when Nate and I survived on a deserted island in the country of Panama. It's our best performing video of the year. Woo! If you go over to your captions and graphics, it will pull up the essential graphics panel. I'm gonna click on my templates. I have mine starred because I use it in every single video and it is this Flipboard title. We have our whole like hook of the video and then I always show this screen. Look at there. I did none of that animating. All the movement, it's just the template. I just made it say what I wanted it to say. There are tons of these templates when it comes to animating text and titles, but there are even more in this Adobe stock panel. It's way more than just text. There are all kinds of things. For example, recently I really needed a cell phone graphic for an ad that I was doing. So the brand had given me several vertical videos to use in the ad, and I wanted the vertical video to be inside of a phone with some text. I don't know how to do that, but thankfully I went over here to Adobe stock and I searched for a Mogurt. I just put phone and crossed my fingers. And thankfully, there were several options. Just like the Flipboard title, all I did was pull this template into my timeline, and there it is. This whole animation is just there, and I can make it look however I want. I can change the footage inside of the phone, and I can change the text. I'm just customizing every single part of this. I changed it to a yellow phone and I made the text what I wanted it to be. And I added my own media inside of the phone. So I really love these. I love what they add to our videos. They make me feel super fancy. And there are literally countless mogers to choose from. And last but not least, captions. I have three words for you. Speech to text. Speech to text is a way to save tons of time when making captions to subtitle your video. And it is now something that I use and love dearly. Let me show you what I mean. I'm currently in just the plain old editing workspace and I've created an in and out point over the entire intro of our video. It's about 32 seconds and it's right before our flipboard. We like to try to make the first 30 seconds of our video as engaging and interesting as possible and captions can really help that, especially when you can't see Nate's face. The idea is if you enjoy the first 30 seconds, then you keep watching the whole video. That's the goal. So typing out, all of Nate's words because he said so much in this 32 second span would take a very long time, but not anymore. I am going to come up here and click on text and then transcribe sequence. I'm not going to change any of these settings, but I am going to click on transcribe in and out point only because once again, I'm only doing the intro and then click transcribe. Wait for the magic and not even five seconds later, Adobe has transcribed everything Nate has said in his intro magically with AI. I don't think you can really appreciate this unless you've wasted a ton of time manually doing it, but just trust me. Now, we're still in the transcript phase. I can go through here now and tweak anything that it may have missed. So let me just do that really quick. For the next okay. The transcript is now perfect. So now in order to turn this transcript into a caption, I'm just gonna click here, create captions. I'm leaving all of these defaults as is and simply click create. And now it's captioned. You think you got this? No. As you can tell, speech to text is my new favorite feature in Premiere. Woo! That is it from me for today. I really hope you learned something that you can apply to your next video. And thank you for watching. Happy editing.